MIT afternoon. No, it's okay. I guess this is a better talk. You know, there is a movie about this talk. <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyway, so I'm very happy to uh, speak here in the, in the conference that's organized 50% uh, uh, by my students. With <laughs> uh, heavy presence of my students. <laughs> So uh, I will talk about short star products. This is uh, my, maybe my first attempt to, uh, to, understand, to really understand something that the physicists were doing. So, uh, <laughs> and to understand it, to, to write something about it. So, uh, so let A be a, a commutative uh, uh, algebra over the complex number, and it will be graded by non-negative And uh, 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 each uh, graded component is going to be finite dimensional. And uh, the zero component uh, uh, is just C. Uh, and uh, also, I will have a Poisson bracket uh, on A. Uh, and it will be of degree minus 2. So it is exactly like in Tudor's talk earlier today. And uh, so this will be uh, really in applications, the algebra of, of functions on uh, the modular space of Latua, more precisely uh, Coulomb branch or, or Higgs branch. Uh, in some particular case, but then we have uh, this gradient structure. So for Higgs branch, you always have this structure. For Coulomb branch, you have uh, often have this structure. Uh, and, uh, so uh, what we want is uh, we want to quantize this algebra, which is a Tudor stock. We said that we turn on some parameter, omega. Yeah. And so, uh, so how can we quantize such an algebra? So one method of quantization, which goes back to the beginnings of quantum mechanics, <coughs> is to just use the same space and define a new product on it uh, called the star product. So, so definition. Uh, a star product on A. And um, I will consider <coughs> uh, star products which are Z mod 2 <coughs> equivalent. So I will uh, not, uh, I will explain what this means and then I will not say anymore that it's equivalent, but it will be always tacitly assumed. So, uh, so this is a product of the following form uh, A star B. <coughs> so the first term is A times B, then goes the Planck's constant times C1 of AB, then H squared times C2 of AB, and so on. And what is required? So the main axiom with it, is, it should be associated. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then uh, also uh, the first term 
C1 of A. Then all, uh, also there, there is a restriction that the CI are uh, bilinear maps from A tensor A to A of uh, degree uh, minus 2i. And then the uh, restriction uh, which tells us how this is connected to the Poisson bracket. Uh, uh, so C, uh, uh, Poisson bracket of uh, A and B is just C1 of AB minus C1 of B. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the Zimo 2 equivariance uh, means that uh, this uh, is invariant with respect to the action of Zimo 2 uh, by uh, x by minus 1 to the degree. So, if we multiply, <coughs> so the priority of the degree is preserved because of this condition that all the degrees are equal. Uh, now, I should say that uh, this is an infinite series, but of course, if we take uh, um, A is uh, of degree M and B is of degree, let's say, K or N, uh, then uh, uh, CI of AB has to vanish if uh, I is bigger than M plus N over 2. just because of this condition. And uh, for this reason, this is actually, uh, this series is infinite, but for every particular element A and B, it's actually terminates. And for this reason, we can actually rescale H bar without any trouble and set it to be equal to one. So I'm going to make an assumption that H bar equals one in this talk, and uh, I don't have to write it. Uh, now, there is also a notion uh, of, uh, uh, of even star product, which I will need, so definition, uh, so star is even if ci of ab is symmetric uh, for uh, Uh, for uh, even i and skew symmetric for one i. And so this means in particular that uh, c1 of ab equals to one half of the Poisson bracket of a and b. Because it is skew symmetric and we have this uh, equation here. So. And uh, so let me give you an example. So this is a classical example, which is called the Moyal Y quantization uh, star product. Uh, so uh, the most basic case is the following. So we have uh, algebra A, which is polynomials in X and P. And uh, uh, and A star B equals to exponential of one half of uh, D uh, P tensor plus DX minus DX tensor plus DP uh, A tensor B and then multiplication of components uh, uh, so and um, so Poisson bracket here is given by the formula P bracket with X is one, uh, where P and X are both in decay one. And uh, so this is, uh, uh, this, uh, so this is an even star product. Yeah, this composition of differential operators or not? Uh, what, what? Is this the composition of differential operators? This formula is very similar. Yeah, exponential differential operators, but because A and B are polynomials. Uh, I mean, so is this how you compute composition of differential operators? Right? Ah, yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. That's because quantization is going to be the algebra of uh, the Y algebra. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, 
just to, to clarify, in your initial setup, a, the, the commutative algebra A is graded as an algebra. That's right. But your non-commutative quantization loses the grade. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a filter. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Two graded stuff. That's correct. Yeah. So I'm going to say about this in a second. Okay, so, so this is an example of an even star product, and then more generally, uh, uh, suppose that V is a uh, symplectic vector space, uh, uh, let's say finite dimensional, uh, then uh, in of H2 of V is the Poisson by vector. So this is the inverse of the symplectic form. And then we can write the following formula, V star V equals to uh, uh, multiplication of the exponential of one half of pi times A times V. So this is it's clearly a generalization. So in this case, Poisson by vector is this expression here. So Poisson by vector is a by derivation of the algebra. And uh, so we can apply the first component of, uh, to A, the second component to B, and then multiply. And, and this is also uh, this is also even star product. And if you want to an example of something that is not even, uh, then you can uh, modify that expression, uh, right? A star B equals to the expon uh, exponential uh, multiplication of the exponential of alpha times uh, dt times it with dx uh, minus 1 minus alpha dx times it with dt times A times B, where alpha is an arbitrary number. And if alpha is not equal to 1 half, this is a uh, uh, this is a star product, but it is not even. Okay, and then uh, this is all very classical stuff, but now I want to make really in 2016. Actually, uh, 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 the condition uh, is the following. We say that uh, star satisfies truncation condition Uh, and, and I will simply say that it is short uh, if uh, CLI of AB is zero when I is bigger than the motivated by uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, superconformal uh, field theory, which is uh, related to what Tudor's talk was about. And uh, what they said that uh, if the algebra A is uh, the uh, algebra of uh, operators in such theory, which is the uh, algebra of uh, uh, classical algebra of operators, so algebra of functions of this modular black one, then uh, it should admit. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so, so they made a conjecture that such things exist, which I will formulate in a few minutes. But at the moment, let me. Uh, uh, talk about another approach uh, to quantization problem, which uh, is more common in uh, representation theory, and which is that you define some filtered algebra, filtered deformation of this graded algebra. So before I go on, any questions? Okay. <laughs> and again, Z mod 2 equivariant quantization. Quantization this algebra E is a, uh, an associative algebra script A. Uh, uh, with a, uh, with a, an increasing filtration. Script A is a union over I and n greater equal zero of F I A. Uh, 
uh, and such that uh, associated graded uh, of this A is identified with straight A as a graded algebra. Uh, and and uh, the z mod 2 equivariance uh, will uh, be expressed by the condition that uh, we have an automorphism S from A to A preserving filtration such that the associated graded of this S is minus 1 to the So that's a more standard way of non-commutative algebra to quantize things. And the question is, and, and of course, if, uh, if we have a star product, so a star product gives rise to such quantization A, namely A as a vector space is just a straight A, the same thing. And uh, the, with new multiplication given by the star product and the uh, filtration induced by the gradient. So if you have a star product, then in a trivial way, you obtain such a structure. And uh, the question, can we go back? If you have a filtered quantization, can you define a uh, uh, star product? And the answer is, of course, no, because star product contains a lot more information. You need some more data uh, in, in order to, uh, to define it. And this data is uh, called the quantization map. This is also very classical and goes back 100 years to Herman Weil. Uh, so what is quantization map? For, for this A, well, in this case, we had product on some new vector space, script A, and then here we had a product on the old space, straight A. So we have to relate these spaces in order to connect these two pictures. So quantization map is a linear map, phi, from script A uh, to... Uh, Ah, and uh, so uh, I forgot to say that it should be compatible uh, with Poisson bracket. So uh, uh, you want the condition that uh, if you take commutator of A with B, uh, the leading term of the commutator, so, so if A and B, uh, yeah, A is an A M and B is an A N. So the commutator of A and B is going to be in. Uh, uh, so so we want. That should be A in F N A. In F M. M N F N. The filtered part of the script A. Oh. F. Yes. F M A. And this is F N A. Then this should be in F M plus N minus 2 A. Well, simply it has to be lower than M plus N because of this condition. And also it has to be the same parity because of this condition. So it will be there. And what we need is uh, that uh, image of the mutator A B in uh, uh, in uh, uh, A M plus N minus 2 is uh, the Poisson bracket of A and B. Okay, so what is a quantization map? So this this is a map uh, phi from A to A uh, linear filtration preserving and the associated graded of phi is the idea. That's all we require. In particular, it's not required to be compatible in any, in any sense with multiplication because uh, this algebra is commutative and this is not, so we can't expect this map to be a homomorphism. And then uh, it turns out that uh, we have a bijection. So if you have uh, a star product, uh, then it gives rise, as we know, to this algebra A, uh, which is Identical A, uh, as we know, and the map phi corresponding to the star product is just the identity itself. Uh, so that's trivial. But to go back, so if you have a pair of algebra A and the quantization map phi, 
Uh, then uh, what we attach, at, at, uh, we can attach to the star product A star B, which is going to be the following. So we first take A and B are in a straight A. We take the images, phi of A and phi of B. We multiply them in the target, and then we take phi in. Uh, I'm uh, uh, yeah, great that Euclid is identical, so it's an isomorphism. And so I can take phi inverse, and that's the star product. And, and this is a bijection. So it's easy to check that that's a bijection. And uh, again, I should say that in physics books, uh, on, uh, in physics textbooks, uh, uh, <laughs> usually phi of A is denoted by A here. So this is a quantization of the classical observable A. So this is a very classical story. Uh, and uh, and also we can say what happens to the evenness. So the star product is even if and only if uh, A uh, is equipped with uh, an anti-atomorphism sigma. Uh, such that uh, sigma square is S and the associated gradient of sigma so it should be filtration preserving, also filtration preserving, and uh, uh, associated graded of sigma is, is i to the d, where i is the square root of minus one. So it is easy to uh, prove this, and I will speak that. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so let me uh, now uh, uh, so the, in other words we can de define star products in two different ways. We can actually write a formula or we can uh, give a quantization algebra and the map phi. Now let me give some examples when this sh short star products uh, occur. Uh, so, uh, so first of all uh, my Gauss product Uh, is short. Actually, uh, even this non-even non product is short. And that's quite clear because uh, we have these derivatives here. So if uh, this has degree m and this has degree n, then this exponential series will terminate once uh, we uh, reach the lower of the two degrees. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, if g uh, is a finite subgroup of the symplectic group uh, here in this setting, then uh, uh, my uh, product defines a short star product on uh, environment. Uh, the polynomial uh, uh, so, so here I forgot to say that my algebra is a uh, uh, polynomial functions on V. And so uh, we can take polynomial functions on V and invariance on the spectrum. So this is a very easy example, which of course is contained in that paper by the physicists. I give a couple of more examples, but before there any questions. It's not automatic, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, if it's graded, if the identity it, uh, doesn't mean that S itself. Uh, yeah, and so uh, so here is uh, another example. 
so let's take uh, G equal S L2 and uh, uh, and let's take uh, the algebra A to be U phi, which is U of S L2 enveloping algebra modulo uh, uh, the ideal uh, corresponding to the central character chi. Um, so in this case, uh, <laughs> so if you like, Casimir is equal to some eigenvalue of chi. And in this case, uh, we have associated gradient of our algebra A, which is straight A. And this is a function on N, where this is a nilpotent function on N. Uh, so the nilpotent cone for SA2. And in this case, it's a very simple thing. It's the type A, one singularity, x, y equals to z squared. Uh, and in this case, uh, there is an action of SL2 on this algebra by conjugation, and uh, it decomposes as 0, V0 plus V2 plus V4 plus so on, where these are highest weighted representations. Uh, and uh, so, so the gradient is defined by this decomposition, so AI is equal to VI. Uh, and in this case, uh, the degrees are all even, so S equals to 1. Uh, so I, I should say that this contains the setting when the degree is minus 1 of the Poisson bracket, because in that case you can simply multiply all the degrees by 2. And you could include the degrees uh, less than minus 2 in the discussion, but uh, most physical applications have degree minus 1 or minus 2, so uh, no, no need to do that. So we have this decomposition, uh, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, phi, uh, so, uh, so we can take phi to be SL2 in Y. And then it is unique, because we have multiplicity-free decomposition. Uh, so in this uh, phi, uh, so what I claim is that this phi uh, defines a short and even charge product. So evenness is easy to show, uh, it's not so interesting, but let me explain why it is short. Well, it is short uh, for the following reason. If you tensor Vm with Vn, then we have the cleft Gordon rule, which says that this uh, is V absolute value of M minus N plus uh, higher finest weights. Uh, and uh, that's exactly, uh, so th this, this implies uh, that, uh, so there is no, the, the, the main point is that there is no summons <coughs> of weight less than absolute value of M minus N. And that exactly implies that AM times, times AN is contained in AM minus N plus higher term. So uh, and that's exactly what uh, this condition says that uh, this should, should vanish when uh, CI should vanish when we go below the minimum of N and N. So are you saying this works for any chi? Or do we have some integrality condition in chi? No, it works for any chi. And uh, so, uh, so this gives us a uniquely defined invariant short and even star product. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then there is a generalization of this. So this is still an uh, introduction, uh, which uh, is really, I'm discussing something that's written in this paper. So generalization, uh, which is more complicated, but still uh, uh, completely analogous. So, so we take any uh, simple algebra G, uh, and then we take A to be the quantization of uh, the minimal important order. So for any simple algebra G, there is a, 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 an important orbit of unique, important orbit of minimal dimension, which is not just zero. And uh, it has a unique uh, quantization in all types other than type A. And in type A, uh, it has a one parameter family of quantizations. So this is quotient of enveloping algebra by so-called Joseph ideal. Uh, and uh, type A1 is this uh, example. 
uh, but let's take any of them and uh, well then uh, the associated gradient is uh, polynomials of this uh, orbit uh, and uh, there's a representation of G it decomposes as V0 which is the trivial representation plus V theta which is the joint representation chi straight is the maximal root <coughs> plus V2 theta plus so on and again it's easy to check that Vm theta tensor product with Vn theta contains Vk theta implies that k is greater or equal than the absolute we take phi to be the unique uh, G invariant quantization. So again, for representation theoretic reasons. So any questions about this? You, you see a difference between the SLT example and CT minus FT? Uh, yeah, because uh, in this example, we just get one quantization. In this case, we have arbitrary parameter. So you uh, is 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 that that one sitting inside the family? Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, this uh, is also invariant with respect to the action of SL two. If this is a two dimensional space, so they can it has to be the same. Oh, so there are also some non invariant ones. And there are some also non-even ones. But uh, here is the, uh, so I'm coming to the main point. So there is a conjecture of uh, this Dean, Pelias, and Raste. Uh, and the conjecture consists of two parts. So first of all, it says that uh, if X is a hyperkähler cone, and uh, a is uh, regular functions on X, uh, then uh, uh, short star product exists for generic quantization parameters. At least for generic quantization parameters. Uh, well, actually, uh, you don't need an SUT isometry? Uh, yes, it's a hyper. So, uh, yeah, so there is a. I, I will say about this. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, in terms of this phi, so you're saying that phi determines actually a, uh, the alloc of the isomorphism, right? I mean, no, 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 no. But you have to give a italic and phi. And that did, this is the same the same amount of data is giving us that. how you think of a italic. No, so, so I, th I think in two different ways. So first I can know A italic, just straight A, and the star product of it. It's one way. And another way is I have an algebra <laughs> A italic whose associated gradient is straight A, a Roman A, and then uh, I have a also a linear map from st straight A to Roman A, uh, to from uh, straight A to uh, purely A, uh, uh, whose associated gradient is the identity. And you're saying unique. Yeah, so there is a union. So I already have my algebra here in this example. Uh, so maybe it would be correct to say that if you fix the script A and you want to ask how many star products on a commutative algebra that it comes from. That's yeah, right. That's and they are parameterized by this phi. They are parameterized by the phi's, and there is only one phi that is G invariant. Yes, okay. But, 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 but can you see in terms of phi, which is phi which parameterizes the star product? No, I, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about that. So, so you, you kind of nail down the isomorphism classes, but Marita class you can't see. I haven't thought about this. Possibly you can, but I, I haven't thought about it. What do you mean by hyperkähler code? Yes, exa exactly. I will say what I do. It, it is uh, something that's not very well defined, but I, I, I'll say it. So this is uh, th this exists, and the second uh, uh, thing is that such products 
are parameterized uh, by finitely many parameters. Uh, so, in other words, that there is a modular space of such products which is finite dimension. Now, the, to the question, what is a, a hypercalar cone? So, indeed, uh, there is no. Uh, there are some papers uh, uh, about what uh, one can mean by this, by mathematical papers, by Swan, for example. Uh, but um, it's not a very well understood notion. Roughly speaking, this means the following. So I'm not going to need a general definition. I did not prove this conjecture yet. And so I'm um, going to care about the example. So uh, what is going to uh, mean uh, th th is the following. So hyperkähler cone. So first of all, it's going to mean that x is a, what is called a symplectic uh, uh, variety, a symplectic singularity. So first of all, uh, x is going to have a c star action which contracts it to, to the vertex, so it's a cone. And it should be a symplectic singularity, which means the following. It has a Poisson bracket. And uh, the, if you have a resolution of singularities, then Poisson, uh, the uh, symplectic form that exists on the smooth part uh, should uh, <coughs> lift to a closed uh, regular two form uh, on the resolution. One can show that, uh, so Boville introduced this notion, uh, and uh, he showed that uh, if it lifts uh, on one such resolution, then it does on any such resolution. And uh, it doesn't have to be non degenerate, if it's not lift to a non degenerate form on some resolution. This is called a symplectic resolution. That's an even better case. This is what Poincot calls the algebra of 21st century. It was the really uh, uh, arbitrary most of the things uh, that happen in representation theory. But sometimes uh, some singularities which are not uh, resolutions are, are right. For example, uh, if you have a group of symplectic uh, reflections, uh, uh, this uh, thing is not a symplectic resolution in general, but a symplectic singularity. And uh, then there is a hyperkähler structure on the open part. Uh, and they should be compatible when you approach singularities. It's not easy to explain how, but um, for example, what you want is you want to, that this is just a metric space uh, such that the metric is defined on the open part by uh, by this hyperkähler. Uh, but uh, the main examples uh, that I'm going to care about is uh, 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 Higgs branches, which. Uh, uh, two bars mentioned in his talk, or uh, 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 vector space V modular G, where V is a symplectic vector space, or nilpotent cone, closure of nilpotent orbits, and so on. <coughs> so there are many examples. Coulomb branches in particular, when they have this C star action. Uh, so I, I'm happy to say that we can say something about this. Ah, so this is a, a, a conjecture uh, in the following sense. So uh, uh, what they uh, did in this paper, and then there were later papers by Didushenko, Pushko, and uh, Jacobi, uh, uh, which uh, uh, sh sh shows that uh, three-dimensional uh, superconformal uh, field theory uh, uh, produces such things, uh, and uh, basically the reason for that, for, for this phenomenon of shortness, is uh, basically this krebs gordon rule. Of course, we don't always have uh, SL two acting by uh, regular transformations of our x, but we always have a non-holomorphic action of uh, SU two. Well, this was related to your question. So, if you have a hyperkähler manifold in general. Then it has a, a sphere as two of complex structures, uh, or CP1 if you like, and they might be different from each other. But if you have a hyperkähler cone, then uh, it, 
it's uh, known that all these structures are equivalent, and there is actually a SU2 group which acts real analytic, but not complex, and uh, it also <coughs> for acts on the absorbables. Uh, but uh, but we don't see it in classical non-commutative algebra because this action is not holomorphic, and so it doesn't come in algebraic geometry. But basically, what happens is uh, the space of uh, absorbables falls into representations of SU2. And then this shortness comes from this uh, from this cleft corner uh, property. But uh, there was no general proof of this conjecture there. And I uh, uh, so uh, uh, theorem that I want to say. Well, it's not quite uh, going to be precisely stated, but uh, uh, the, the, the answer to uh, question two will be yes. So I can show that there are finitely many parameters with some assumptions, small assumptions, which you will see. And uh, in, for one, I can uh, I can show it in many cases. So I can construct it. So I should say that these are about all the examples where it's obvious how to construct such a product, construct such products, and why should why they should exist at all. G mod n? But it has to be a cone. Yeah, it is. You can also ask for a quantization of the structure sheet whose global sections give this one zero proof. Uh, also do that. Uh, uh, so, so to have a product on the sheet? Yeah. I, mm, I have to think about it. No. Ah, so, you, so a G mod N, you mean a fine extension of G mod N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it's going to be function for the direct sum. Uh, uh, yeah, it's but uh, that's right. Uh, but what kind of Poisson structure are you going to quantize? It, it should be. Uh, I have. Um, Uh, yeah, 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 possibly, yes, yeah, but it's more complicated because this is not symplectic, so uh, generically. Yeah. So, uh, so still, I didn't understand. What prevents us just to use directly that hyperkelion means SO2 action? Why not to just follow your example, but the example uh, tell the product of representation? What prevents us from some straightforward proof? We have SO2 action, then we can apply. Yeah, exactly. What well, well I mean, we don't have a multiplicity free situation. So, I, I mean, you have to produce some quantization. It's not obvious how to produce any quantization. Okay, you need to produce, and then you use, you use right. right, it is equivalent with respect to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so any quantization can produce will more or less automatically because because of hyperkelion structure will succeed. If it is compatible with the structure yeah. in some way, but it is not easy to say what it means because hyperkelion structure is not an algebraic geometry. Thing. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, so the, this thing about the hyperkelion. I mean, obviously, as you said, this whole thing is a three D story. I mean, the hyperkelion cone. <laughs> the sort of uh, Q analog of these spaces aren't hyperkähler cones, right? I mean, that's they, right. Yes. They look different in some complex. Yeah, way. yeah. And for Q analogs, I don't know an analog of this condition, uh -huh. of short, because we, we need filtration for that. By the way, you mentioned giving uh, some uh, some cones because of Hofstra groups or what? Uh, you mentioned giving some. Uh, one might have even, uh, no, I didn't. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, so let me explain. So I will not have time to explain, uh, uh, say much about uh, the, how to construct these products, but I can explain why they are parameterized by finitely many parameters, and it will be clear what kind of structure we get. But uh, this can, uh, I was puzzled about this for a long time until I talked to Kansevich for about one minute, and he explained to me what I should do. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so here is... Uh, Explanation of Kansevich, which uh, 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 David Diota explained to me that this was all these two pieces is uh, all along. So, <coughs> you know, the existence of quantization, right? Sometimes. Uh, no, uh, no, no, how to think about this uh, short product? Because <laughs> this condition doesn't seem to be very natural if you just introduce it like that. But it's related to something much more natural. 
And uh, this is the following. Uh, so, uh, so suppose we have this algebra A. Uh, suppose we have this quantum algebra A. Suppose you have a map psi from A to A. It's just the filtration preserving linear map. No conditions so far. And then we make a definition that the psi uh, trace on A is a, a linear function T from A to C such that T of uh, alpha beta uh, equals to T of psi of beta times alpha. Uh, and uh, and then uh, we say that T is non-degenerate if the bilinear form uh, B sub T of uh, alpha beta equals to T of the product alpha beta is non-degenerate but I need to make a stronger non-degeneracy assumption, which is a little bit unusual. It's non-degenerate when restricted to every filtration piece. Yeah, I said, I said at the very beginning that uh, Graded pieces of straight A are finite dimensional, in particular these are finite dimensional. Because they're just separate. And before you ask for this non dependency, is it already clear that psi on the center of A is um, non zero? Or, sorry, that psi acts identically on the center of A? Uh, no. Uh, and it doesn't have to. But. Uh, uh, what the, 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 the amazing fact, which is easy to prove but hard to believe when you first see it, is the following uh, that uh, lemma uh, uh, if t is non degenerate, then uh, psi is an algebra automorphism. It's kind of hard to believe. You start with any linear map, then you put some non-degeneracy condition, which is uh, uh, basically an open condition. A randomly chosen function is going to be non-degenerate if you have any non-degenerate ones at all. And then all of a sudden, you get a very strong restriction that psi is a homomorphism. And uh, well, psi would be an isomorphism, of course, in this case, because psi uh, uh, basically relates to bilinear forms, that T of alpha beta and T of beta alpha, which are both non-degenerate, but why it should, should be, uh, so it's, there is no contradiction because uh, there is a very strong condition here that uh, we have a, a psi which is filtration preserving. Uh, so uh, for every, if you have a non-degenerate trace, then you can define psi on every f and a, but uh, when you go from n to n plus one, they won't be compatible in general. And their, their compatibility is a very strong condition which cuts it down enormously to this situation. Uh, and uh, if you complete A and then filtration, does psi become inner conjugation by alpha? No. Uh, 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 complete uh, A? Uh, ah, yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Usually, yes. So the Lie algebra of. Uh, so I will, I will say. Uh, uh, okay. So and uh, uh, and again, I will consider traces which are Z-mod two equivariant without talking much about them. And uh, and then uh, we can define the following things in this situation. So you can take f uh, i minus one of a and take its orthogonal complement in f i of a. And so I will call this a sub i, 
and then uh, uh, this uh, maps to straight AI, and this is an isomorphism of vector spaces. So we, that this gives rise to a quantization map phi, which is just going to uh, uh, map this AI to this AI by the inverse of this map. So any uh, non-degenerate trace uh, defines uh, a, a quantization map. And uh, This is a filter filtration pieces. So we have you're, you're F zero of A, which is C, and this is contained in F one of A. Sure, so this is the fact that you make it as a subscript there. I was completely wrong. You mean that you take the perp? You take oh. the perp inside of F I of ah, A. Ah, I'm saying I'm taking perp of this subspace inside this space, okay. with respect to the bilinear form that I define, which is non-degenerate uh, on on this space. So this means. Mm -hmm that this orthogonal complement will have zero intersection with, uh, with this space. And uh, it will be an, an actual complement, and therefore isomorphically mapped to the graded, which is a quotient of Fi by Fi minus one. So we, we get a quantization map, and the proposition is that uh, 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 the, the star product corresponding to phi is short. And this is very easy to prove, actually. It's an elementary calculation. Uh, and uh, conversely, uh, how to get from a short star, uh, star product to, uh, to such trace. So we say that a short star product, <coughs> so if you, you have a short star product, then you have a bilinear form on the commutative algebra given by the constant term of the star product of A with B. And we know because of the shortness condition, star, uh, uh, constant term will only be non-zero if both of them have the same degree. So therefore, for this form, uh, uh, all the graded pieces are orthogonal. And then we say star is non-degenerate if the form restricted to each graded piece is non-degenerate. Uh, and uh, if, so for example, it is easy to show that this, sh this is short and non-degenerate. And conversely, if you have star, which is short and non-degenerate, then uh, uh, th then you can construct the trace uh, by uh, as follows. So the, our vector space is the same. So the trace uh, of uh, uh, of a will just be a zero, the zero mode of a, and, and then psi is determined by uh, by this uh, formula. So now why is it well? Why is it better? Well, because it tells us what is the parametrization of these things. So maybe I should also say what it means to be even for this star product. So star is even if and only if uh, uh, t is sigma invariant. So here is s invariant and this sigma invariant and psi equal s. So this is what it means to be even. Ah. Uh, so, so let me explain why uh, this is good. Well, uh, because this tells us what are parameters for short non-degenerate star products. So the first thing you have to fix is you have to fix uh, this quantization A. And in the case when uh, uh, we have a symplectic singularity. Uh, so for X symplectic singularity, uh, A are parameterized by second cohomology of a certain uh, uh, Q factorial terminalization, partial resolution. It's a finite dimensional space, modulo W, which is uh, called the Mikhailov variable. It's a reflection group, which is called the Mikhailov variable group. 
So it's a certain affine space, because uh, it's a reflection group, and finite dimensional in particular. And then once we fixed A, we have to fix a Psi. And Psi is going to be an algebra automorphism, so it lies in automorphism group of A. And so this is a, uh, because A is finitely uh, generated, this uh, uh, an automorphism is determined completely by its action on a particular filtration piece, and in particular, it's an algebraic group. And moreover, it is a reductive group if we uh, access hyperkähler form. Because the real part of the, the Lie algebra of this group has to preserve the metric, and therefore it will be compact. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then the third piece of data is this trace. But in this situation, this T is nothing but an element of the zeros Hochschild homology of A with coefficients in A psi dual and invariant with respect to X. So, uh, so for, uh, for part uh, two of the conjecture, we just need to show that uh, this space dual is finite dimension. And uh, so for this, uh, uh, so, so, so this we can show uh, um, in this case of hyperkähler cone in the following way. So first let's consider the case psi equals to one. And in this case, uh, we need to consider H zero of A with coefficient in A. Well, uh, there is a, a, a Brilinski spectral sequence which shows that uh, this has a filtration and associated gradient of this receives a surjection from Poisson zero homology of, uh, of the graded algebra, which is simply a quotient of this A by Poisson bracket of A with itself. And now uh, 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 there is a, a theorem of Kaledin uh, that says that X has finitely many symplectic leads. That's true for any symplectic singularity. And there is a theorem of uh, Travis Shadler and myself, which came handy here, and which says that if a variety has finitely many symplectic leaf, then its zero Poisson homology is a finite dimensional vector space. In uh, the first instance of that, was proved in my paper with uh, Yuri and Victor Ginsburg, and it was a conjecture of Aleph and Parker, which uh, conjectured that fact for uh, invariance in the polynomial algebra on symplectic vector space. But it turns out to be true. <coughs> Whenever you have finally many leaves, there is a theorem of Sh Shedler and myself uh, that if X has finally many leaves, then HP0 of X of uh, C of X is finite dimension. And so this takes care of the case Psi equals to one. And then if Psi equals finite, if Psi is finite order, which of, of course includes the even case, then uh, you just replace X by the fixed points by of Psi. And that also has finally many symplectic leaves. And if you're, uh, and then you can prove it in general for, by some work, you can prove it in general for reductive group of the work. So this shows that at least non-degenerate short star products, which is what physicists only care, they only care about non-degenerate, in fact, positive star products. So they are parameterized by finite dimensional variety. And we know exactly what this variety looks like. So you mean the passage to invariance, yeah, the same passage, but for reductive groups now, right? Not for finite. But for yeah, but well, you, there is a, it's more complicated than I can say in minus two minutes, but <laughs> anyway, uh, it works. And uh, there is a big, uh, and, and then how to construct. So there is, I don't have time to say this, but uh, there are a number of cases where we can do it. We can do it for all quantizations of uh, V mod G, which are symplectic reflection algebras. Uh, or generic uh, parameter. We can do it for 
hidden branches in a number of cases and maybe even in yeah, more it's languages. Specific, specific to your study, it's specific formulas. Or yeah, some kind of formulas. This is formal construction. Right. And for nilpotent cone of linear algebra, I can show that uh, in that case, so maybe I should give this example in 30 seconds. So if you have nilpotent cone of G, then uh, it's uh, HP0 is obviously equal to C. It's a quotient of symmetric of a function of nilpotent cone by Poisson bracket, but Poisson bracket includes action of the linear algebra, so all the non-trivial representations get thrown away, and then only the trivial remains, which comes with multiplicity one. And in this, this implied, uh, and, and it is also the same as H H zero of uh, uh, U prime, uh, and uh, uh, and this means that there exists a unique trace T up to scaling. Uh, of course, the trace mat matters only up to scaling, and then we can show that it's non-degenerate for generic kind. And the way to show it's non-degenerate for generic kind, you take a particular filtration piece, and then you consider chi's, which are uh, characters of finite dimensional representations. Because finite dimensional representations are unitary, uh, the trace is positive definite form, on this filtration piece for sufficiently large dominant weight. And therefore, it's non-degenerate, and then by trivial uh, algebraic geometry, it's only degenerate for generic kind. So uh, this allows you to construct. Okay, thank you very much. It's in general case, appeared in the general case. I, I did part two in general for any hyperpaler form. Ah, ah, that's the only, uh, I thought that, yeah. I, I thought it was more general. Uh, any hyperpaler cone has, ah, uh, oh, sorry, okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, so you're using our theorem with trains, which by the way is proved using theory of D modules. Uh, uh, using, it's a special case of the fact, the direct image of a colonomic D module is colonomic. Essentially, for non-degenerate, with the non-degeneracy assumption. Still remains to understand degenerate star product, which also should have a nice structure. Did you try to find counterexamples? No, there exist degenerate products. For example, this uh, uh, SL2 product even is, and I mean, this trace is going to be, if you have an ideal, a big ideal, like uh, the kernel of a finite dimensional representation, that ideal is going to be in the kernel of this trace form. And it will be degenerate in that case, but still, the star product uh, very well behaves uh, at that point. So, you, you don't impose the conditions with associated radius uh, for your filtration and finite degenerate. Uh, well, I, I mean, uh, not for the. If I want to prove anything, <laughs> then I have to impose okay. it. I said it's a symplectic singularity, in particular, it's an algebraic variety. Or, or speed. No, in abstract definition it's not needed. Because I don't do anything, so I don't need anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I change my question. Do you have an example when it isn't finite? You, you, quite possibly, but I haven't proved it yet. I, uh, so, uh, for, I, this x, for the theorem that there are finitely many parameters, uh, with S, so if, if you want, for example, with finite order automorphism, it, it works for any scheme, uh, any Poisson scheme with finitely many symplectic leads. It doesn't have to be reduced for it. But that's a different question. All right. No, but it should be for the finite, finite type. type. Yes, it should be finite. Yeah. Just a quick question again. Thank you.